Hello everyone, this is a Yoronga Quit Chat so with uh, Ben and this is Dr. Norton. Um, we're talking about the Vietnam War, it's the 50th uh, anniversary since Australia left involvement and uh, the Queensland and Australian government has asked all schools to do something to commemorate and this is what we've chosen and it's pretty special here to have um, Vietnam vets, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. My pleasure, yeah, no, no problem. Beautiful. Um, so one of my first questions was, um, what was it like growing up back way back what was it like what was it like growing up growing up oh i had a great um young life i uh was a country boy oh, yeah. and uh, yes no it was a good life and um as i said to you earlier i went to boarding school in near barrel because mm. there was no high school within kiwi of where we lived yeah yeah and, and most of the students were country boys because yeah. of the for the same reason yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was yeah no I had a I uh, had a great um, start and education of course is the most important thing that you do and when you're young yeah because it uh, it uh, leads you into your adult life I did medicine of course and um, I did it um, as a sort of a scholarship with the army yeah okay yeah so when I graduated I had a um, contract to serve with them and. Um, so after doing my hospital residencies, I first went to Malaysia, where I did uh, work in a British military hospital for mm. two years, and um, learned a lot about tropical medicine, which was not um, much taught in Australia. Yeah. Um, saw all the infectious diseases that we hopefully. Um, uh, excluded from our population by <laughs> immunizations yeah. they're all there so having come back from Malaya I thought well now I'll have a nice comfortable little life in Australia only to find I was off to Vietnam yeah right okay that was in 1965 and um, that was with the infantry battalion one battalion Royal Australian Regiment having finished that I um, went to England uh, to further studies, came back and uh, was posted back again to the first Australian Field Hospital. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah which is at Bang Cao, south of uh, Vietnam, yeah. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. yeah. See. On the South China Sea. <laughs> On the South China Sea, yeah. Right right. On the coast, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's interesting, yeah. So you went to, you go to Vietnam twice? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I was a lucky boy. <laughs> It's one way of looking at yeah. Yeah, no, it was, we were very, uh, everything was in short supply and um, medical officers were certainly in short supply. So quite a few of our people did two tours. Yep. Two, yeah. Quite a number of medical officers did two tours. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how long was a tour? A year. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my second one was 18 months um, because there were problems getting a replacement up yeah okay yeah so yeah so a bit longer yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay. interesting yeah because yeah. um i tried to do some research but i also wanted to keep like the conversation authentic because so much of our generation doesn't know much about the vietnam conflict we don't know much about it yeah like, um well it was um if, as far as the army was concerned it was a peacetime army and they were pretty underprepared yeah and Manning was very short, I've alluded to that. Yeah. And that is why uh, the government introduced national service. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it meant that um, young men aged 20 were selected by ballot yeah. and they had to serve for two years. Mm. And um, it meant that uh, their life was fairly disrupted, you know. Yeah. They, uh, and it meant that we had people who had all sorts of life experiences before they came mm. into the army. From the point of view of the hospital, uh, it, that was particularly significant because we had um, national servicemen. The first year they had to do their basic infantry training. They then had to be they were then selected to various corps. Uh, the people who were selected to medical corps had then had to undergo training as medics. 
and some of them had to be trained for as operating theatre technicians. Now, all that was in a year. Yeah, yeah, wow. So it meant these young fellows would arrive to do really important jobs with very little experience and certainly yeah. training, which yeah. was pretty quick and pretty uh, yeah. condensed. Yeah. So virtually these young men were called on to do uh, almost on the job training. Yeah. Yeah, so that was interesting. And the other thing was that our nurses were only 15 uh, for that whole hospital. Yeah, wow. That meant that um, the medics were very important in the nursing and it meant that uh, the nurses had to do really on the job training a lot of these yeah. people. Yeah, yeah they learned quite quickly. So they were under a lot of pressure, but they really um, stepped up to the mark. Mm. Yeah. I was very, uh, very proud of the way our young men um, managed to perform their tasks. and. Yeah. Working at the hospital, it was pretty um, full on, you know, you just never knew um, when things were going to happen. Yeah. You know, they could be having a so-called day off. Yeah. And you have to they're, act. They're into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. One thing I find really interesting is um, often people in like military circles aren't considered that smart or anything, but you guys made it incredible book like that's it's pretty incredible how look yeah <laughs> the skills that our people have are as you say quite incredible that is yeah. a really yeah, great it's, book it's an amazing book yeah but one of the things i found was that uh, our people the national service people were quite well educated yeah uh, and they were quick to learn and they were smart yeah and they had a lot of endurance. I mean, um, if we had a serious casualty, casualty situation, might have to work 36 hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. No rest. Yeah, it's in Well, some rest, but not much from 36 hours. Yeah. We just had to keep working until the, uh, the job was done. Yeah. And the hospital had the very, very good record that everybody, 99% of people, over 99% actually, who arrived alive lived. Yeah, wow. That's great. That's incredible, yeah. Oh, yeah, incredible. And some yeah. of the, regrettably, some of the casualties were serious and and uh, very nasty wounds. Yeah. And later, of course, there was the psychological problem added to that. Yeah, yeah. I think um, a, uh, a disorder known as post-traumatic stress disorder yeah. uh, was what was recognised and called that in Vietnam as yeah. a result of the Vietnam service. And so we're learning a lot more about post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, how prevalent it is in the community yeah. and how difficult it is to treat. Yeah. And um, it's an unfortunate thing. So part of training for the military in the future will be resilience yep. to be able to handle tough situations. Yeah. 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 That's what a mental toughness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope um, the young. I hope our young people don't have to do this. Yeah. Um, that would be our hope. Yeah. Yeah. When I look at you, I'm thinking you'd be about eighteen. Yeah, yeah. We had boys your age. Yeah. In our battalion. Yeah. Um, we had boys turning nineteen quite regularly. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's an it's an awful thought. Yeah, being put into. Them. A beyond horrible situation. Uncomfortable, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the infantry lads were really uh, had to work hard. It was a difficult time for them, and um, yeah, and they felt, in some ways, not well supported by the Australian community. Um, you're probably mm -hmm. well aware that uh, there was yeah. a lot of protests and um, things like. Um, we had a postal strike. Yeah, right. And that's at a, you know at a time when uh, there were no um, IT. We couldn't. The only way we could communicate with our people at home was by letter. Yeah. Handwritten letters. So when the postal strike hit us, it was um, a bit of a blower. Yeah. But again, the soldiers showed how they could deal with a thing like that. Yeah. They printed envelopes. 
And on, on the envelope was a caricature of a uh, soldier giving a right cross to a postie, and the caption <laughs> the caption was punch a postie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just, that's, they just found ways. And they posted them all over Australia, <laughs> and um, I think it probably had something to do with the strike ending. <laughs> <laughs> they just realised the idea. Yeah. It's not going yeah. too well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, um, they were really remarkable young men. They did a very good job. Yeah. Um, I think their I think their work is appreciated now, but they had to um, had to deal with the fact that it was not well appreciated at the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And I can remember many, or not many, but some of our nurses being very distressed at the people um, criticising and abusing wounded people. Yep. Which yep. is Which is, yeah. A bit sad. And um, I think, um, I'm not sure, but I, I, I personally feel that may have had something to do to ag ag aggravate their psychological conditions. Yep, 100%, really. yeah. yeah. I mean, it was to see politicians. I hear some politicians retired now, but not only recently retired, actually boasting about it. Yeah, yeah. it's um very sad. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, these men didn't. They just got sent off to somewhere. They didn't get a yeah, choice. Yeah, well, it wasn't their fault. I mean, it was yeah. for the national servicemen, no, it was a ballot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Interesting. And it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't really all that comfortable when we came back to Australia. Mm. Uh, a lot of people would be able to report abuse, and yeah, yeah, and that was hard to take. Yeah, it would have been yeah because you've gone through so much and then you come home and yeah, yeah. It's not that you expect to be praised or anything. You just expect it to be left alone, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, acknowledge that that's what you've done, yeah. and and uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, you don't expect anything more than that, but to be abused is a bit yeah. was a bit uh, difficult to take, and I know that um, a lot of young fellows were angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so I have an, like another couple of questions. Obviously, as I said before, we don't know too much about the Vietnam War in our in our generation. Can you tell us from your perspective what was it? What happened? Well, yes, uh, um, and as far as I was concerned, as I said, I had just returned home from Malaya and um, there was an announcement by the government that uh, they were going to commit a battalion of troops to Vietnam. That was in mid-1965 mm. and we were then um, in a, a pretty and heightened state of activity to get that battalion prepared. Mm. So there wasn't a lot of time to think about um, what was really going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I had previously visited Vietnam. I'd done, mm -hmm. when I was in Mal uh, Malaya, um, I'd done a uh, short tour, uh, just to have a look around to see what was going on. So I knew the country yeah, okay. reasonably well. It was, it was, Malaya was a very organized British settled yeah. area yeah. where everything worked vietnam was a french colonial french yeah power and um nothing worked yeah <laughs> they couldn't drink the water out of the taps yeah uh, later when i went to france i found you couldn't do that in some of the rural areas either <laughs> um yeah nothing worked the uh the government was in chaos yeah the um Corruption was uh, rampant, and um, it was a. The country was uh, outside the, in the rural area. It was not really unlike Malaya. So, those of us who'd been there had sort of that experience. We knew what the the climate was like, which was hot and humid and nasty yeah. and trying. Um, so, our senior people, our CEOs of battalions and company commanders and a lot of the senior NCOs had had that experience. They'd been to Malaya. Yeah. So that was fortunate for our young people in that they knew, they knew roughly what to expect. Yeah. 
They knew what a jungle was like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 How unpleasant. Like. <laughs> and how humid, how hot it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I remember somebody <laughs> said to me, and it stopped me in my tracks, what happened when it rained? And I thought, what happened when it rained? We just got wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the mental health side of things during the Vietnam War? Because, yeah, now, now today it's like, it's a big thing, but what was it like back then? Yeah, well, I think, um, yes, I think there's a lot of, infl a lot of um, consideration of the uh, mental health of young people today, and yep. especially um, the adverse effects that followed COVID restrictions and interruption with your way of life. I think that seriously impacted our young people. Mm. As I said, in Vietnam, here they were, um, especially the infantry uh, soldiers, um, in a dangerous situation, yet they were very uh, self-reliant, but they looked after each other. Yeah. And as I said, you know, the um, cohesion amongst them, physical, mental, was strong. Yeah. And um, their morale was high, they were I think they were satisfied that they were doing their job properly. Uh, yep. The enemy certainly respected them. Yeah. Um, as we respected them. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I think, as I said, the uh, mental health issues were not prominent in, um, yeah. in Vietnam. I, there were a few, but nothing. Yeah. Nothing really serious. Yeah. Uh, certainly not. A, certainly not widespread, and. Uh, our people were not involved in drug taking. Yeah, it was one thing you said earlier that really stood out to me was um, the camaraderie, and I think that's something that our generation could probably learn. Yeah, but you yeah. know, I, you look at your school. I mean, you would know yeah. from your your students, you know, how you were yeah. together or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, how would you describe the morale of your school? Um, it's it's fairly good but i think yeah it's just there was something it seems like there was something about your generation that was just yeah we can just learn from yeah yeah but I, you know i would expect that uh, you're all i mean in your year year 12 um, yeah you're all working to the same end yeah. uh, and this is the end of your secondary education I would imagine that you're, generally speaking, a happy, cohesive group that yeah. tends to help each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember a man said to me one day, what is the Anzac spirit? The Anzac spirit, I think, is that you respect each other. Yeah. Um, if somebody is having a difficulty, you help him. Yeah. You look after him and you work together. Yeah. Yeah. And I think... I think that's it, and I, mm. I hope that's present in your school. Certainly, yeah. it's present in our unit. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. And and that's it's a good lesson. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah. yeah. So you you have to learn to take the bad knocks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people, you know, you if somebody uh, in in the school environment has a uh, problem. I think by getting together and helping that person, yeah, uh, that, that helps that person become more re resilient. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an important part of our life. Mm. How do you? How would you say you build resilience? Well, I think training. Training. Training is important. Um, learning to work together. Mm. Learning to work effectively. Um, taking notice of a. Uh, you have to have a leader. Yeah in a situation you so take respect your leader take notice of what he says work together if you disagree with the leadership you've got to speak up yeah 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 <laughs> at the right time yeah of course yeah <laughs> got to respect them as a leader yeah, but yeah. yeah i mean there's no point for a debate uh in the time of war yeah <laughs> you need a leader can't you? have an argument <laughs> no, no seriously uh, yeah. yeah i think um it's all about uh, open discussion, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, frank, honest, and let's face it, if it gets testy, you know, you said in your debate, sometimes they get a bit fiery. Yeah. Good. 
that's when you say that's when you say what you really think. Yeah, okay, that's what I say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you offend somebody you should apologize. Um thank you so much. Oh, I really appreciate the chat. Yeah, I'm gonna cherish this for forever.